Morning, everyone. Today we're going to go over staff. It's not going to be uh, an in-depth look just because we, we do offer those onboardings now. So I'm just going to basically going over the staff certification instructions and what that entails. Just want to also briefly go over the help desk web page. We have the things to know up here. The staff data entry guides, the data reporting instructions and the webinar and presentations are the most pertinent to this portion. Um, data reporting instructions contains the staff certification instructions as well as a link to the YouTube video of staff certification. Same thing, one's just a video, one's just the other's written. The webinar and presentations has the webinars in it. This webinar, so what we're going to be doing with this webinar is each section is going to be broken out and put up individually. So staff is going to have its own, we'll have its own Q&A. That way you don't have to filter through the entire webinar just to get to staff. We also have the video presentations and trainings. And we have a bunch of staff ones here that we have done on how to do everything. We have the staff certification, um, how to create a MACE account, how that ties in. Well, you had to set leave of absence specifically because that's always one that people have trouble with. Updating contact information is a big one. I'll go over that a little bit. Um, creating long term substitute teachers, editing staff data and creating new staff assignments. Those are all pretty pertinent to staff certification. These are the staff instructions. I'm going to be switching between uh, live view and this. So basically staff certification is just certifying your staff for the year. Um, what we do is we actually put some people are familiar with this. When you go into staff. Um, note to staff does require access to NEO. In order to get access to NEO, you have to be in NEO staff for the district and then the superintendent's office has to submit the access request on your behalf, which is available on the page here. Once you get that, we'll make your career out so that you can access staff. I am updating the message screen now with some pertinent information. But one thing that we have done this year and we had last year, so some of you are familiar with it, is that we are now placing everybody in a pending status in progress at the beginning of the year, starting 7 1, when staff is quote unquote rolled into the new year. Um, when that happens, everybody's years of experience is automatically updated. They're set to the in progress status. Part of the reason we did this is so that, um, especially for larger districts, you know who you've worked on in staff, so you don't have to keep a separate list. You know, you've got your in progress and you've got your active. So anyone who's active, you've already worked on. Anyone who's in progress or pending, you need to update. And to update those, you would just click on their staff ID. It would take you into their assignment. And then you would click on the action screen and edit. And if you get this message, that means that the main schools for your district has not been done yet. So the superintendent's office has to go in and submit the main schools so that you can do your staff and enter student data. Um, this is one of the ways we kind of get make sure everybody has done their main schools is that we want to allow you to edit or enter staff or enter in student data until your main schools is completed. But basically, when you get when you get to here, you click edit and then it's going to open up the information. What you're doing here is you're just verifying that basically the the assignment is still accurate. The FTE is accurate. Um, if there's a salary, you're going to make sure that that's still accurate. If everything is still pertinent, you would hit submit. You're also going to want to make sure contact information is up to date because that is accessible to the field. Anyone who's trying to reach someone in the school. So I will show you how that ties in in a minute. When you when you're down and you're done, you want to make sure you hit submit and not save because if you hit save, all it's going to do is save everything as it is. It's not going to make them active. Submit is the button that makes them active. Um, so if you if you've sworn you worked on someone, but they're still showing as in progress or pending, it's because you hit the save button. You need to go in and you hit submit and it'll just set them to active. So I'll actually tie over to. Uh, certification report now. But once everybody's active or as you're doing it, it's going to. 
it's going to update staff certification instantly. So as you're setting people to active, these are all going to update. Now that staff is is live. And staff certification just shows you all of your patient positions with the numbers of those that are in that position. You've got the number of staff, number of in progress positions, number of active positions, number of positions, total FTE, total EPS FTE and number of pending. Uh, pending would is different from in progress because pending is if you're entering a new assignment or employee and, and you save it as pending. In case you forgot some information, so say you're entering an employee and you don't know their salary, you can pend it and go back and finish it. That way you don't have to start over from scratch. Yeah, I do have a question here to clarify years of experience has been updated in a rollover. That is correct. Um, years of experience gets updated. Um, CTE years of experience, however, does not. So that has to be manually done, but regular years of experience for non CTE staff does get updated on its own automatically. For staff certification here, so you've got your positions, you've got the number of staff. That's obviously the number of people who are in that assignment. Number of in progress positions, pretty obvious. Um, number of active positions and number of positions. These can differ from the number of staff because you can have you know, mo multiple positions under one assignment, especially when you have classroom teachers. So those numbers, the number of staff and number of positions aren't always going to match up. So you want to you want to not be too worried if you see that your number of positions is higher than your number of staff because you can have multiple people doing that position. So those aren't always going to be a one to one ratio. Total FTE is your full time equivalency. That's that number you enter when you're entering in staff. That's based on a 40 hour work week. Uh, this can be higher than EPS FTE because you are limited on your EPS FB, uh, FTE. That's your uh, essential program services full time equivalency. So that's the people like classroom teachers who are counting for your your actual uh, subsidy counts versus FTE, which is like um, the janitors and everything like that. Those are those are non EPS positions, so they can have more than one in it. So as you scroll through here, you can just see this is all the positions we have. It's going to list anybody who's in that position. If you click on view positions, it's going to show you the number of people who are in that role. Um, obviously, it's only going to show one person for us, but if you had 15 people in there, it's going to show you each person. And then you click your staff ID to get to their assignment specifically. So um, if you have, say, an in progress or pending position here, uh, you can click on view positions to see who it is. Your EPS staff is just a breakdown of those who qualify for EPS and their actual EPS counts. It's the same numbers from the higher up. It's just a more rigid, closer view to it. Uh, district roles is those who are assigned to district specific roles. Uh, this is important in terms of that contact information because this is who we're going to outreach to at the DOE or even someone from the street who wants to contact one of these people. Um, say there's a program that wants to contact all the librarians in the state and let them know about a cool reading program. They're going to go into our contact search, which I will show and look up all the librarians. So if this isn't updated, they're going to get the wrong contact information. So you want to make sure as you're doing your staff, you're updating your district roles. And if it changes throughout the year, you also want to come in here and update this. Um, you would have a drop down and anyone who's eligible for the position would show. A note that I want to make here is that if you do not have a school librarian or a nurse, the superintendent can be selected here, but they do not actually need a staff assignment for that position. So if you do not have a, a, a nurse to put in here, the superintendent can be selected, but you do not need to give the superintendent an actual nurse assignment that's going to mess up your EPS counts. I want to show the the contact search as well here because I've mentioned it a few times. So on the Neo dashboard, um, even this can be accessed publicly too. 
so this is under the public section, so anybody can come in here and look up staff. Um, they're going to be able to look up superintendents, SAU primary contacts, staff positions, so non-teaching positions or teaching positions, so superintendents, data specialists, things like that would show up under non-teaching position. They can look up main schools based on type, location, or grade span, opened or closed within the last 10 years. Um, so anybody who's entered in here can be re can be searched for. So that's why the contact information is very important. You're going to want to do the staff's working contact information, not their private information. So their school email, their school phone number. And you're not going to want to put in the, whoever's entering this data. It's not your information because that means anytime someone's tried to reach out to that person, they're going to get you instead. So again, it is the staff members working email and working phone number. This is also a great resource for anyone who's trying to reach out, especially this time of year. Um, if you have students showing up on your October counts. Um, or you need to reach out to someone for staff, say you go to look up a staff person, but they still have a staff assignment at the previous district. And you need to reach out to the other district to ask them to, to end the staff assignment or update a student. You can do that by going to. SAU primary contacts. And I'm going to pick on. Uh, Auburn here. If you hit search. This gives you their primary point of contacts. And you know if it's student related, you'd want to reach out to the student data specialist. If it's staff related, you want to reach out to the staff data specialist. Um, so this is an easy way to find out who that is and their email address so you can reach out to them directly without having to go through the entire school Rolodex to figure out who you need to talk to. We do have a bunch of staff reports, um, staff details, and by course FTE, obviously it's going to show you staff details based on courses or FTE. Um, then we have staff with multiple positions. Then we have the EPS specific ones, FTE by person, district, and position. We also have the staff details export. Um, as you can see, that does require you to log in to access it, which is why it asked me to log in. This lists everybody's information for your for your district. <laughs> Everything to do with their staff assignment is listed here. Um, and if you get someone in staff that comes up as needs review, when you're updating or you're trying to certify staff, because that's one of the things that will block you from certifying staff. If anyone's flag is need review, you can come into this report, go to the very end, and needs review will be here, and it'll tell you exactly what needs to be updated in order to clear that. So let me go into the staff instructions. We've gone over all of this. What I want to show you is not listed here, but basically the, what's stopping you from certifying, I need to get this updated. What will stop you from certifying is the uh, EFSO 5 part 2, which is your special ed staff. That needs to be done by the special ed director and the superintendent. Um, if the district roles isn't fully updated, if there's a blank there, if anyone is in progress or pending, or anyone that needs review, those four things are going to stop you. Technically, five things is going to stop you from certifying your staff. So if you if your superintendent goes down to certify staff and it's grayed out, it's one of those five things. It doesn't mean um, it doesn't mean that all of them are wrong. It means that one of these is a potential issue from stopping you from certifying your staff. So you just need to go and review one of them. If any one of those things that I mentioned is not completed, it will stop you from certifying. Um, so again, that's the EFS 05 part two, any pending staff, any in progress staff, anyone who needs review um, or any district roles that are not completed, which have a blank person there. That all needs to be completed before staff certification can be completed. And if for some reason staff certification needs to be removed, the superintendent can go into the staff certification report and click the remove certification button. Um, we at the help desk can also do that. So if someone got, you know, forgot to put someone into staff bef before it was certified, uh, the superintendent or the help desk can remove that for you so that you can get them in and then have it recertified.
that is staff in a nutshell and certification in terms of October reporting. So uh, we'll give it a minute for questions. I know some did pop in and they got answered, but we'll give it a few more minutes if there's any more. So yeah, once we get this put together, it will be located here under this tile. And I know that we got we got about 50 of our 75 folks back, so there is a good chunk that didn't make it to the second uh, to the the sequel here. Um, so we'll uh, we'll put out a notice. I'll get it posted so that they can see everything that you guys had gone and seen here. But uh, yep, it'll be up top 2023 section. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of uh, various resources as well up here. I know Drew was mainly going through the staff certification report. So if you're brand new to staff, uh, definitely get in touch with us so we can kind of get you a little more up to speed with the ins and outs of it if you haven't already. But there is also, as he pointed out, all those guides to pretty much step you through everything. And um, all of the individual report instructions are also up in the agenda um, once again. So feel free to use this agenda link. I'll leave this up here for a while, much like I did this special education webinar. I'll have this resource links, which will I'll basically update all of this to that. That way you guys can get to it for quick instructions through the month of October. But I, we haven't had any questions come in. And I guess I did also just want to mention one other piece with staff. Um, it's been a common question so far where folks have been wondering about a lot of these uh, contracted uh, nurses that are coming in from the hosp local hospitals to kind of sub in. Uh, for a nurse and they might have like a pool of people, you know, like four or five people that come in on different days and folks were wondering how they get entered into the staff system. Um, and so for for the for any type of position like that um, that's going on with these contractors or pooled positions, um, each person will need to have their own profile in Neo staff and be entered. And the way that you guys can do that is by having the nurse or whoever the contracted staff is provide you their educator ID number uh, rather than their social. That way, if they don't already exist in NEO or if you need to pull them in, you can do so with just their six digit educator ID and you don't need their full social because we know that they don't always like to share that information with you, uh, which is fine. So we do have an alternate way for you to do that. Uh, but just uh, yeah, I figured I would throw that one in as well because it is a common question right now. But I'll, I'll give it a, a moment in case anybody has any questions about that specifically, but you can also just call or email the help desk. And we can give you some more clarification 